Wednesday, March 20th, one day away from the first round of the NCAA tournament. We are recording this Tuesday before the play-in games have happened. So if you're not hearing commentary on us from the first two games of the NCAA tournament, play-in games, uh, that's because we haven't watched them. That's because they haven't happened yet. Card, it looks like you're moving some things around in the background there. Did you forget to set up your bit before we clicked record? I did, yes. What do you have there? A mug. Just a big old mug? A big old mug from my Ferndale Project Beer Club membership. Isn't that the mug that you had last week that you were using for the bit? Yep. So we're just like, it's like a pitching rotation. We're just cycling a guy through in every five days? Yeah, I mean, some say that that mug looks like Chris Sale. <laughs> some do say that. Any comment on our two and a half hour long marble racing commentary on the Bleacher Report app yesterday? Uh, you know what? I'm going to take this chance to toot our own horns. Uh, we're special. That's all I got to say. I, I think there's only two people on the planet who can make that as entertaining as I think it was. And you know what? Even though it was a two-hour marble race, which determined which teams would advance in the bracket, damn it, I had a good time. Yeah. I, I did too. Shot to Stevie P, Stevie Wonder, Steve Zilla. The price is right. Detroit's finest. Uh, I thought he was great. Beautiful hands. Great job in general. Uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. We're doing a lot of really exciting, fun stuff with Bleacher Report right now. And it's uh, sort of reframing my view of how we can do content and all the fun things we can do. So had a blast over there. We'll be back in the BR app uh, the next couple of days. If you're listening to this Wednesday, I believe we have a room 11 a.m. Eastern time Wednesday morning. So Bleacher's been great to us, giving us a lot of work over there right now. We're doing our best to make uh, this as fun for our college basketball fans and just find entertaining ways to preview this tournament and react to the game. So throughout the tournament, we'll be back in the BR app. Make sure you get on the BR app, create an account so that you can see some notifications, see every time that we start rooms. We send them to the Discord as well. So if you're looking for live content from us, a lot of people ask, like, why don't you do things live? That's because all the live things we do, we do through Bleacher Report right now. That's how it works. And uh, we want to keep it that way. It's been fun. All right, Cart, you want to start us off with the YouTube comment of the day? I do. Uh, this is a longer one, so please bear with me. But this comes one. This comes from Mushroom Mangoes. He said, ever since I watched your vlog when y'all toured Northwestern and prayed to Boo Booey over Bob's Pizza after a 21-point win, I have done my best to do so with my fellow cats. So I ask of you, Founder Carter, to provide your wisdom and editing to our prayers that have failed Father Boo far too often as of late. As of today, this is what we plan on praying from Barclays before your edits. <clears throat> oh, please actually bow your head, Gregory. Uh, dear Heavenly College Basketball God, we call upon you now in our moment of need. It is said that you give your hardest battles to your strongest soldiers, so I thank you for the test you have put in front of Daniel Budarius Bowie. That even with a hobbled Langborg for a team already without Nicholson and Barry, the fruits of Boo's labors will be rewarded. The late great Robin Williams once said, some men are born great, others have greatness thrust upon them. While the accolades have left no doubt that Bowie is the former, but it has become clear that the latter will come up for Chris Collins this weekend, as it will be confirmed that you indeed are the second coming of Coach K. Meant to bring a championship back to Chicago and save a seemingly plummeting college basketball landscape. A man Duke will finally be sorry they did not offer a job to as they see you beat the defending champions before they fall in embarrassing fashion to Wisconsin in a game that all remove all but removes the validity of their 2015 championship. So all we ask of you is to bring health and fair officiating to Father Budarius and his comrades in time of need, and we trust he will take care of the rest in his home state. To bring Evanston a joy that even our quarter system cannot take from us because to quote the great Dalai Lama, all one must do is give Budarius the ball and get ready to get it out the fucking net. Amen. That last line was insane. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, first of all, that's my favorite comment in channel history to give us a, a well thought out prayer that starts with thanking the Lord for this tough draw of UConn 
incredible and ends with get the ball out the fucking net i mean that's that's like throwbacks to college you giving a hype up speech before we go to the bar i have many other thoughts i made mental notes of while this was going by the way uh not sure i there's probably zero overlap between listeners of the sleepers podcast and listeners of the call her daddy podcast but uh was getting some call her daddy vibes with father over and over again uh call him Bowie. Could be an off-season thing for us. Father Bowie, Father Boo, call her, call him Bowie. Um, second, if Chris Collins actually is the second coming of Coach K, he's going straight to Ann Arbor. So I hope the the run happens. If the run happens, he's on the first Amtrak to Ann Arbor in two weeks. Uh, third, Daniel Budarius Bowie. I'm not sure who that is. It's Budarius Lamar Bowie Jr. Please get that right. And I feel like I had a fourth that I'm now forgetting. What are your thoughts? Uh, that was special. That was truly special. And I want, and you know, it was special because I screenshotted that when I saw that comment. I didn't even want to go through the. Uh, I didn't want to go through the process of maybe even trying to find that and losing sight of it through the comments. That was truly, truly special. I think that Greg made some good edits to that. Uh, the point of putting Budarius Boo into these prayers is to understand that he goes into a mode where Daniel isn't there anymore. He's not Daniel on that court. He's Budarius Lamar Bowie. And I think that needs to be incorporated into the prayer if you were looking for edits. But otherwise, flawless, to be yeah. to be quite frank with you. Shout out to Mushrooms Mangoes. Yeah, incredible. Uh, the, the one thing I think bodes poorly from all of that, though, the quote from Robin Williams seems a little ominous, given the way Robin Williams' time ended. I don't want to see Budarius self-destruct and go out like that. So I might choose maybe a quote from somebody that did not go out in that fashion. Very With true. all due respect to the great Robin Williams. I just, it feels a little ominous for my guy, Budarius. I'm trying to protect him and have his back here. Does it matter if that Robin Williams is a country day graduate? Is that actually real? Yeah. That seems like such a lie. He's not. I, I sw- yeah, I swear to God. Seriously? Yeah. I'm giving this a good Google. He's from Michigan. He is from Michigan. He's not from country day, is he? Yeah. He, he is. He went to country day. Wow. That's incredible. Had no idea. All right. Wow. Full circle. Did not expect Robin Williams discourse on uh, the the morning before the NCAA tournament, but that's what you get here, folks. Uh, great job. Thank you for that comment. That was great. Cart, I want to quickly address the fact that at 2.43 in the morning, you sent me a text. You sent me a text that uh, had a picture of grapes. You were holding a bowl of grapes on the counter, and the text said, I also just cleaned grapes, so my wife has fresh ones in the morning. Your comments. Just just a good husband. By the way, I know I mentioned it on here before. Wash your wash your grapes, wash your fruit. It just enhances the taste of grapes like times a thousand. Times a thousand. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pro wash everything. What does that mean? Don't leave anything unwashed. So like you're washing a grilled cheese sandwich? Of course. Okay. It's In its like, own way, you got to wash things. How do you wash a grilled cheese sandwich? Well, there's grease that you're cooking it in, and you're just going to give it a quick rinse. Like with, like you rinse the actual sandwich. You're going to give the sandwich a rinse in the grease that it's already cooking in in the pan. You rinse. know what? You're, you're reaching, but the tournament's upon us, so I'm going to let that go. I appreciate that. I just think you're an animal for rinsing grapes at 2.43 in the morning after staying up till 1.45 doing previews and then waking up at a, a hard nine this morning to start recording for the next episode. Really impressive stuff. I appreciate your effort. Uh, okay, here we go to the comments from the Discord. Before we do comments from the Discord, we must simply acknowledge the accurate fact that yesterday was the most prolific day in Discord sign-up history. I'd like to shout out some of the members who have joined the Discord. Preston, Burner605, J Webb, R Pit Dog, uh, Paul B, Big Harry, Grant Coho, Colton. The process has begun. Purdue Redemption Tour. 
Uh, R. Halligan, O'Mill 61, Ryan, Scar 88, Kirby Rich, Happy P, DM Wave 45, C Pod the Goat, Mills, Mills again, Toon, Jess, Same Old Lions, Kristen Winningham, George Tan, Kaya Kona, Kaya Kona again, and Kaya Kona one more time. That's an insane Discord sign up day. Uh, wow. We're excited. I think the the bracket contest that we have been promoting and pushed into the Discord seems to be a, a good way to have gotten people to sign up. That's what we were hoping for. But, man, Cart, we are over 228 people in the Discord right now. The community is as healthy as it's ever been. The games I put together for March are popping off. Everybody's having fun with the Survivor Pool, with the Against the Spread Challenge, with the Pick All 16 Seeds game, with the Player Draft. There's a lot of activity right now, a lot of commentary in general. Vibes are great, and uh, this is the healthiest that we've seen the Discord since we started it. I know I'm excited about it, and now it's starting to feel like it's gone from this like niche thing that was fun to like now, if you're not in there, you're pretty much really missing out on something cool and a big part of the listening experience of this show. I agree, and two things. One, tattoo secured. Uh-huh. There will be there will be a sleepers tattoo that will happen. We floated the idea of doing it at the final four. Um, I think that'd be kind of good for content. So maybe like we'll find a little tattoo place down there and I'll grab one. Mm-hmm. Uh and also personal shout out to my guy Quinn Hazard, who joined the Discord as well. Quinn, it's a long time coming. Fight on USC. You might deserve better than Andy Enfield. I know you love all these games that are going on right now. He's a game connoisseur, Greg. Uh, he he thrives in the game setting. I think you're like top. Well, actually, you're one when it comes to game settings. Thank you. In my top five, easily when it comes to game settings. So I'm excited to see how he does. A lot of pressure on him, but I think that uh, he's ready for the moment. Yeah, Quinn's a guy who I need to hang out with more. The only time I really got to hang out with Quinn was at your wedding, and had a great time with Quinn. Uh, do feel strongly that uh, based on what I've seen from you and Meg's Queen Meg's trips to visit Quinn and his wife, uh, I would really get along with them. So I am I would like games with Quinn is what I'm trying to say here. Join the Discord. Link is in the description of this. Uh, should we change it? If we get to 300, should we do something extra special? Like, should I get a tattoo? I mean, I, I'm not against that idea completely. I don't have a tattoo. But I think so that'd, be, it, it, that'd be your first one would be sleepers. It'd be my first one. First and only. I don't plan on ever getting a tattoo. But I, I'm, I think I'm willing to get a tattoo if we got 300 before the final four. That's a, ooh, 300 before the final, so. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a lot. We need like 70 more in a couple weeks. Hey, I mean, the challenge is out there. All right, I'm going on record. I will get a tattoo. I will get a tattoo. I and need- Ryan the Lion can pick what it is. Oh, okay. No, that we're not doing. Okay, get, come on, relax. All right, I I will get a tattoo. Okay, if we get uh, if we get three hundred Discord members signed up before the final four, I, look, I don't think we will. I'll just say that that's the only reason I'm throwing this out there. I don't think we actually will. Jokes on you, Discord. We'll find out. And uh, by the way, because these games have been going so well in March, I'm already workshopping some fun off season stuff we can do along the lines of this. Like, I don't think I realized how much people like games. And then we got a comment where someone was like, these March contests are worth the price of admission alone. Like, thanks for putting this all together. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. Y'all like this? I thought I was the only one who liked this. So I have, I have a lot of concepts that I'm workshopping that we could do in the off season that would uh, make us enjoy our time while there's no games on in creative ways. And uh, I'm excited to unveil them privately to the Discord. Should be great. To the comments. Malik Perry starts us off today. He says, have you seen Hall's interview? I swear Hall went from smiles to goofy to black force energy. He stayed cursing. I like this. He needs to embody green to get this team winning. You know what? If we do something this March, it's because of Malik. If we go out, though, it's also because of Malik. Hmm. And not just, and I'm not talking about Hall. I'm talking about Perry. This is a legacy week for Malik Perry. This is a legacy week. For Perry, he could go down in Discord history for better or for worse. I'm excited. I like Legacy Weeks in general. 
Uh, what does embody green mean? Like, you know, when Drake said in that one song, uh, I got, I'm doing 48 minutes on a tour meniscus, who's subbing? Yeah. And the song seeing green. Yeah. That, that gets you going. And that's kind of what embodies that phrase. Okay. That's a great answer on the spot from you. Shane B., are you guys going to be going back through Greg's seven-item checklist for national title contenders at some point this week? P.S. Mason still matters. Shane B., yes, we are. That's going to come out on Thursday morning's episode. I need to do some research on that today. I'm really excited about it. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I think there. I know there's at least one team that did not qualify the last time we did the exercise that has since won six straight. Spoiler alert, it's Tennessee. That's bad news for Purdue fans. Wait, no, it's not. How could that be? Oh, because even before the loss, they won six straight. Tennessee hadn't won six straight, and they have won six straight now during the season. Yeah. And by the way, it was through a gauntlet portion of their schedule. They beat a couple of their top five opponents. So, mm. um, yeah, it, interesting. Interesting. We'll be excited to see the results. Alex Braden Smith Enjoyer says, which one seed is most or least likely to win their region? And no hard feelings if you pick against Purdue. It's, it's North Carolina to me. Uh, I think they're the weakest one seed. I think they're in the in the region with a lot of chaos going on. Um, in every other region, I have the one seed getting out of the first weekend fairly easily. Honestly, I have most of the one seeds in the other region getting to the Elite Eight fairly easily as well. Um, I think there's a good amount of steps along the way for North Carolina to get picked off by some teams. You have just one one seed in your final four, right? Uh, yes. I was you had, unless you made changes. I'm thinking that's true. Yep, yeah, man. I uh, you you picked the one one seed that's not in my final four. I have three one seeds. I have all the other three, and you picked the one I don't. Um, I agree. North Carolina's draw is the best, but that requires you to trust North Carolina to say they're most likely to win their region. I don't. I believe Houston is most likely to win their region. Um, wait, I, wait, I thought I thought the question asked which one seed is least likely to win their like m- most or least likely. Oh, so, should answer oh, both. Oh my apologies. Okay, so I didn't say the most likely. I would say most likely would be Houston for me too, just because. Uh-uh. Just actually no, uh uh-uh. uh, I changed that. I'm sorry. I think most likely is actually Purdue, even though I didn't pick it for my bracket because I think Purdue can get to the Elite Eight. Easy, like easy, the most probably easiest path in my opinion. Um, and then from there, you know, they could match up with possibly Creighton, and that game could go either way. Like it's not for sure Creighton's gonna win. It's not for sure Purdue's gonna win. Purdue's probably the better team in that case. Um, but I think actually, honestly, Purdue has the, the most le- the most likely path to a Final Four. I'm really torn on all of this. Um... Most likely is definitely Houston to me. I just don't I don't see them getting picked off by Texas A&M or Nebraska. So immediately into the Sweet 16 where I, I don't think they have a tough game until Kentucky potentially. And even if it is Kentucky, they match up really well with Kentucky, as I said in the preview. Um, it, if it's not Kentucky, I think they cakewalk. So Houston most likely. Least likely is really difficult because I think all three of the others are least likely in their own ways. UConn has the hardest draw but they're UConn. Purdue actually, I think, has the most, I don't know, like most possible missteps along the way, if that makes sense. Like they're they're going to have to face the demons of like the underseeded team potentially in McNeese, who's the best mid-major in the country, or they're going to have to face Bill Self, which is scary, or they're going to have to face Dalton Connect in Tennessee, who's one of the five teams that can win a national title, but per my criteria, in a rematch of a game earlier in the season that they already play. It's hard to beat a team twice. I don't know. I And, like, of the three, don't you trust Purdue intangibly the least, like, mentally? Like, we've seen North Carolina make a title game. We've seen UConn win the title. And then we haven't seen Purdue do anything. And that's scary. Um, and then UNC is just the worst team. So I don't know. I produce my national title pick, so it feels dumb for me to say they're least likely to win their region. But I think I'm going to say Purdue because I think I think Purdue will have better chances when they're just playing the better teams. Think of how they've dominated non-conference through the years. If they get to the Final Four and it's all great teams, I love Purdue and I trust Purdue. It's about getting to the Final Four that scares me. 
So based on your comment, we can move on so we don't get caught up on this too much. Does the 8-9 matchup scare you more than if Purdue gets to, like, you know, the Kansas or the Creighton portion of their bracket? I think it's the second weekend that scares me because I, I don't think TCU or Utah State are good enough to beat Purdue. I don't. Okay. But it's that that 16 game, whether it's McNeese or Gonzaga or Kansas, like Gonzaga and Kansas have already seen Purdue the in Maui. Like they were there. They watched this team up close. Um, McNeese is the best mid major in the country. They're killers like that. The, any of those three would be really tough. And then just to get to an elite eight game, like you said, with Creighton or Tennessee, that's a that's tough. There's a lot of steps along the way for me. Uh, Purdue Pete says, now that we've had the chance to digest all of the Sunday, Monday shows, podcast articles, what part of the preview slash discourse is your favorite each year? And what part is your least favorite? Least favorite is the exhaustive dialogue about the committee missing a team by one seed line based on criteria. They don't even consider favorite is seeing team reactions and hearing from coaches, players making the dance for the first time in a while. What are yours? Uh, favorite for me is definitely the look in on the teams that, made the run or haven't been in the tournament in a while. And it's just like, they got the whole stadium filled up. It's not like just the back room, like, you know, lounge center for the team. Like they had the whole stadium filled up. It's a watch party. They get everybody there. I really enjoy that. The most exhausting part. uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like people with the committee, but like eventually the crying about teams that get in and teams that are where like gets old. Like, cause I feel like it can go on throughout the whole tournament. And I feel like at a certain point, there should be a cutoff where you just got to let it go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my, my favorite part is just the selection show itself and the inner peace that I find in the five hours after uh, every single year, what it, like maybe five minutes into the selection show, I actually just have like a physical visceral reaction where I notice myself being like, wow, I love this so much. Like they're, there, I, I assume every human on earth has something that brings them innate joy and it's probably like their family and friends, but like also you have like a hobby or something you love. Like I live for this. I live for this. I like blew up a good career to do this because I love this so much. It makes no sense. And uh, in that selection show every year, I feel like it's manifested in real physical energy and joy from me. So I love it. And then after I just have five hours of bliss, like, I can't get enough just like looking through all the matchups and reading about the teams and everything. it's so fun. I love it. My least favorite part is uh, in the days that follow from Monday through Thursday, honestly, uh, I don't like how many bracket contests there are. And I've gotten worse about this over the year. I don't need the invite from everyone I've ever met to their $10 bracket contest. I just don't like, I'm sorry. I like everyone that I've met in my life all of them unequivocally. If if you and I aren't on like talk every day basis, I don't need your work pool for $5 to win 120. I just don't need it. Uh, we have a very large pool we're running. That's hard enough at this point. I'm going to focus on that. I don't need a thousand racket contests. I'd also like to put honorable mention out there to the people who hammer the fact that they love to say the tournament starts not on Thursday. That it starts with the playing games. Uh, I I get it. Like you, it's because you love college basketball so much, but also like relax. Stop yelling at me. Yeah. Bonus answer. I'm annoyed that the portal stuff started this week. Um, and we we're gonna do a portal video later today because uh, my favorite player, Doug McDaniel, is in the portal. So, but it's annoying. It's annoying that we have to like be paying attention to players leaving schools right now while the NCAA tournament's going on. We should be focused on that. Boiler Khan says, what's your favorite way to do the round one games as a fan? Post up at a sports bar, hit a casino, go to a sports book, chill at the crib by yourself with multiple screens, have a house party with friends, tickets, go to the games. What's the move for the best two sports days of the year? Uh, easy answer for me. Multiple screens at home, all supplies needed, food ordered, ready, whatever food that you want in that case, whatever snacks that you need. Make sure the fridge is fully stocked. Fire up your multiple screens and just, you know, get ready to go. I will say I'm interested or not interested. I I usually do the multiple screens things. This is the first year for the tournament that I've had YouTube TV. So you can do like the multi view. I'm 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 gonna do a little feeling out of the first day though. I, if if I'm not feeling the multi view, I might go back to my multiples just screen thing, just so I can have, I guess, the the games. I don't, I don't need, I don't want like small boxes maybe sometimes I'm gonna see how it works out, but 
hundred percent at home, fully stock your fridge, food, beer, all everything you need, drinks, and just chill out. I can't do. I don't, I don't like doing the first two days, like watching at a bar or honestly, even like any type of watch party thing. I will have like maybe a couple of my boys over, anyone who wants to watch, but like I got to be at my home base. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be the the centerpiece. Like with all due respect, these are my four days a year where I'm the center of the universe and everyone in my universe needs to know that. <laughs> and I've, I've done my best to make that extremely clear through the years. I think, I, I think the surrounding planets that orbit my universe are aware at this point. It's great. Uh, come, come Monday after this, whatever you need park. I'm in movie. I'm in walks. Let's go for three hours. Let's do a trail hike. I'm in, but these are my four days. They're my terms. Uh, with that said, variable of having a daughter this year terrifies me, terrifies me. And I love her. I love her to death. Uh, I'm terrified. I'm terrified that like a magical madness moment is going to happen. And like, I just, I'm on diaper duty. I'm terrified of that. That like, I'm, I almost want to have a two screen setup ready in her changing room. There's, I, I was thinking might be worth it to throw a screen in there. Seriously, it might have to happen. Uh, to answer your screen question, though, by the way, the move is 100% two TVs with the two box on each. That's the move this you think year. think that's the move? Okay. Yeah, because then you can still, if there's only three games on, you can go to one big one on either one. Make sure you got two Apple TVs set up. Uh, that's the move, I think, because I used to be a three TV sometimes in a laptop household. That was the move. This year, don't overwork yourself. Two TVs, that's enough. Use the multi-view, but you never have to do the quad box with two TVs. You can always have two here, two there, one here, two there. Cycle through as you need. That's 100% the move. And I'm realizing as I go through the comment here from uh, BoilerCon, I've actually been blessed enough to do all of these through the years in some way. And uh, like Sports Bar was fun. We did that together once. We did Casino. We were with the Field of 68 from the Bet Rivers Casino in, or the Rivers Casino in Philly. That was fun other than the fact that we had our worst betting weekend of our lives, and that mm-hmm. really hung over the weekend. Um, I've also gone to games, which is probably my least favorite, with all due respect. I think like if there's a special team worth seeing, then yeah, go do it. But I, I went to see the Trey Burke Michigan team, their first two, like when they had VCU and uh, – I think it was South Dakota or something. Um, it was really hard because I, I wanted to watch the other games. Like I just, as much, I'm sitting there watching my favorite college basketball team ever, like refreshing scores, knowing there's seven other games on that I'm not paying attention to. I hated that. So I think uh, the move, which some Purdue fans in our Discord are doing, I think the move for sure is try and go to games in the second weekend. Watch the games from home the first weekend. And then if your team is lucky enough, fortunate enough to make the second weekend go to the sweet 16 when they're a little more spaced out then you don't miss much augie says is nebraska a marble school closest they've gotten to winning a championship in 25 years a marble school yeah marbles i completely blacked out the fact that we did we did that marble race (laughs) yeah i was like did you miss yesterday (laughs) no uh full transparency here can I, can I can I can I have that moment? Yeah. Uh, someone sent me a Venmo for the bracket contest, and I was sending them the details to join. Oh, incredible! Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is Nebraska a Marvel school? I mean this with all due respect. Kisei Tomonaga's head actually looks like a marble. <laughs> So mean. What? Why? Mean. You got to stop saying disrespectful things after saying with all due respect. That's not disrespectful. I mean, this. Oh, my God, man. It's a state fair handsome 2.0. I despise it. Let's move on. Melba says, which one of you could fit more marbles in your mouth? Do you mind if I take this one? Yeah, you go ahead. I'm not answering that. There's a very obvious answer. Do you know what the obvious answer is? I'm going to answer. I just want to know. You're saying you won't answer. I just want to know if you know the answer before. No, I I don't. The very obvious answer to this question is me. I could fit more marbles in my mouth. Why? I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to give me grace on the next 30 seconds of discussion here. I'm very scared. Don't, don't don't do what you always do. Just don't do it. Just give me, I'm, I'm, Personally requesting the flyer and the leeway to say what I need to say to answer this question correctly. I can fit a lot of things in my mouth. 
I can. It's a, it is a thing that I can, I can fit my fist in my mouth, Carter. Um, no, okay. I'm uncomfortable. I'm so uncomfortable. I just fit my fist in my mouth right there. I can do it. I'm uncomfortable. I know you are, but that's the answer is who could fit more. Like I can, I can fit a lot of marbles in my mouth. You can have that title. Okay, you want to move on? Mm. <laughs> Coleman's Burner says, now that we are all smoking on the Pac-12 pack, how many generations do you think the Pac-12 conference fall off will be studied for? Smoking on the Pac-12. Uh, I feel like we got to uh, not talk bad about them because those are our new our new comrades. We need to embrace them. We need them to be great, Coleman. Yeah, I... Just an all-time case study on how to fumble a bag. I mean, Pac-12, you had things. You had a conference. You had the Conference of Champions. You had Bill Walton championing. You had a monopoly on the late-night games. You had UCLA, the USC rivalry. You had Oregon and Nike money. You had all these great West Coast things. And here you are joining the mid-ass Big Ten. Huh? Like, I'm... That's a bad look for all of y'all. Uh, it is a fall off, and I'm excited for them to join because I like a lot of these schools. But I'm going to miss the Pac-12 era. I like that conference. I have a lot of good memories of some of those teams from growing up. No yeah, more. Cr credit to them, though. I think they're taking on the challenge of uh, being one of those, like, fixer-type girls. Like, that, I can fix him. Like, that's what they're saying about the Big Ten. He's got something there. I can fix him. He's, like, the Pac-12 is telling his girl or her girls, like – you know, you guys don't know him. He's he he actually is very kind. I can fix him. That's, That's what they're true. gonna do with the conference. Probably true. Do you think I could pick? Do you think I could fit the Pac-12 in my mouth? I can't do this, G. I can't. I'm I'm good in any situation, but this is this is really throwing me off here. Steve had beautiful hands, man. Linko says in each of the last three NCAA tournaments, a 15 seed has made the Sweet 16. Oral Roberts, St. Peter's, and Princeton. Which one of the 15 seeds this year do you think has the best chance to upset a two and make the Sweet 16? And do you think it's a good idea to pick this in your bracket? Uh, I think the best chance is Western Kentucky out of all the 15 seeds. Um, Shout out to Brian Ralph. I did the preview with the Marquette game with him. Marquette is one of those teams that has like some demon type things going on. Tyler Kolick's health still kind of looms. He's, he's supposedly going to be healthy, but like he hasn't played in a little bit. Western Kentucky's a team that is they they thrive in like causing chaos. They can't shoot. They can't really score that well, but they love just chaos. They're one of the fastest teams in the country. They love playing up tempo. Um yeah, I related it to like when Shaka's teams at Texas played Abilene Christian and Abilene Christian shot like 20% from the field and three, but they caused chaos and turnovers and won the game and Texas tightened up. Uh, I'm not saying Marquette's going to do that, but out of all the two seeds, I think Western Kentucky would have the best chance um, if Marquette kind of tightens up. Mm. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Marquette is like a scary team to trust right now. I have a different answer. Should probably surprise nobody. I think Long Beach State could cause problems for Arizona. Did they, uh, they beat Michigan and Chrysler? Not just that. I think uh, – so, a couple things. Their coach got fired. They lost five straight games to end the regular season. They were supposed to be, like, a very good team and win the regular season. They didn't. Uh, they lost five straight from February 24th to March 9th. Dan Monson gets fired. Like, the whole narrative is like, oh, he's done when the season ends. Then they go to the conference tournament and win three straight games. And now, all of a sudden, like, they're – playing for their coach that's on the way out. And there's like the sense of desperation. I kind of like it. Um, say what you want. Like obviously Michigan stunk. That win didn't mean anything, but this team played two power conference teams in the season. They played Michigan. They played USC on the road. They won both. Like there, there's something, I know those teams aren't great, but like you go and you beat Boogie Ellis, you beat Isaiah Collier, you beat Michigan when Doug McDaniel was good when pre suspension, like that's, Something you're a big game team. Uh, Marcus Tashonis is really good. He was like, he's a very, very good player. So, I, I've talked about how Arizona's volatile if Caleb Love is just cold for a game. The door's open no matter who they play. Long Beach State could definitely make it interesting. Can I steal a point from our, our, our guy, Subi? Yeah, of course. Um, you mentioned that they were able to go into uh, on the road at, at the Galen Center and beat USC, correct? Yep. You know who wasn't able to do that? 
Who? Arizona. Ooh, this is why I love doing these previews. Like you come in with knowledge and I come in with knowledge that all these smart people give us when we get to do the previews. When it's fun. That's the best part about it. I, I was looking, I was looking up Long Beach State stats. I was on Evan Mia grinding Long Beach State. I love previews. Yeah, I I'm honestly convinced maybe I should pick Long Beach State now. I don't trust Arizona at all, but uh I'm gonna try not to. All right, great job, comment section. We appreciate you. That was fantastic. Let's get to the show today. I'm gonna start with uh just a simple one. Cinderella's. I want you to give me your three most likely Cinderella's. What I mean by this, I don't want a team that can win a game. I want a team that can make the second weekend or beyond. Like I, you have to believe this team could make a legitimate VCU style run, win at minimum two games, and become the story of this tournament in a way of like, oh my God, are they going to get all the way there? Last season, I would have counted Florida Atlantic, by the way. So I don't need like a pure tiny mid major thirteen seed bonus points if you do that. But give me a team that could come out of nowhere, make the second weekend potentially make a third weekend and be the story of the tournament. I want your top three candidates, please. Top three. Do they have to be like in order of like most likely or can I just give give top three candidates? You can do whatever you'd like. Okay. I'm going to start off with like the easy one, just because of the way I think the region plays out the way the, the, like I mentioned, it's, it's in North Carolina's region and the one seed operates. I think that grand Canyon has a great opportunity to, Honestly, in a world, even make a Final Four out of this region. You look at if they have a second round matchup with Alabama or Charleston, who I think would be, you know, uh, a a game that if they get to, I think St. Mary's is a tougher out than those two teams. They have a certain style of tempo that they play. St. Mary's is one of the slowest teams in the country. I think they're like 350 or something in tempo, Grand Canyon's a team that's in like the hundreds, so they want to speed you up. It's two different styles of basketball. I personally pick St. Mary's to come out of that game, but uh, my good my good friend Brian Ralph was telling me about Grand Canyon, and outside of guys like Grant Foster, they could maybe make St. Mary's drag them to play their style of game. They get past that game. I like them to win their next matchup. Like I mentioned before, I think the one seed is the the weakest one seed in all of these uh of these brackets. I see a world where Grand Canyon's able to get to like a Sweet Sixteen, and they might even be playing like a New Mexico. They get to the Elite Eight, play a New Mexico or, or a team of that caliber. Even if they're playing the high seed of Arizona. I I still like Grand Canyon in that game. I think that uh Grand Canyon is a team that could possibly make a run. I don't hate that. Tyon Grant Foster is a monster. I have said if they were in a different spot in the bracket, I would like them a lot. My problem is I don't want to pick them to win their very first game. Um, yeah, me, me either. But yeah. I'm, do, I'm doing the see the world thing. Yeah, I respect uh, that. I respect that. Second second one might be stealing this from you. It's Budarius, man. Huh. It's Budarius. Hear me out on this. FAU might be bad. There's a world. People don't want to admit that. I don't even want to admit it. FAU actually might just be bad. Like yeah. That just might be the thing. If Northwestern gets UConn uncomfortable, if Boo Booey does a thing, gets them to the boo zone, like we like to point out, they knock off the one seed in that second game. It's open after that. Like, you you do that, you get past that one seed, you know, you, you have a potential matchup of maybe playing an Illinois team that – you know, you're used to, you're used to playing for the Chicago type Big Ten thing. Like that could be a thing. Uh, You have San Diego State in that region as well. Auburn, I know you're not as high on Auburn as me. I'm not that high on them, but you really think that they're maybe not what people think they are. A possible matchup between like a BYU or uh, I could even see the matchup with Iowa State and being able to win that game. Uh, I think that if Northwestern is able to win their first game and then just get to four minutes left in that second game against UConn, get past that, somehow win that game, I think that they're in a in a good spot to make a run. Yeah. Yeah, I I love it. I mean, the point about Florida Atlantic might just be bad, I think is the best point because nobody wants to admit that. They're really fun. How much different would the perception of Florida Atlantic be if Memphis had just beaten them in round one last year? Oh, it'd be it'd be so different. Like, I, I think there's a chance they're not even in the tournament this year if 
that magical run hadn't happened. So I, I've been really underwhelmed with them this year in conference play. Again, they are a team that gets up for big games. So is Northwestern. Northwestern's actually been better in big games for Evan Mead than Florida Atlantic has been. Uh, this does strike me as a game like Florida Atlantic, even in conference play and their wins, let teams hang around a ton. You can't let Boo Darius hang around. He's a cockroach. He's a talented cockroach. He's a killer. He will eat you. And uh, I like that pick for sure. I just, man, I wish for their sake it wasn't UConn after that. But uh, you're right. I, they can pose problems for UConn 100%. Yeah, and then my last pick, a little less explanation, but um, Greg, I'm going to go with the classic legendary run. This player ends up with a statue at his school uh, because of this run. There's a player in his last three games. He scored 20 points, 32 points, and 30 points. I'm just going to say this Put quite simply, Wade Taylor, Texas A&M. And it's just purely based off that I think Wade Taylor can just have a legendary tournament run where you're just getting 30-point games from him. Master classes. It could happen. I I drafted him in the players draft in the second round, and uh, my first pick was a Houston player. So that should tell you strategically it made no sense. Like one of those two is going to have to lose. But as long as I get one of them out of that pod – as long as Casey doesn't come out, I'm feeling really good. Um, yeah, I, I, ah, they're playing great. That's what I'll say right now. They, they were not a good basketball team for the first three and a half months of the season. In the last three weeks, they are like one of the top 10 best teams in the country. You're kind of hoping it's just like a put the foot on the gas thing for Buzz Williams and this team. Cause they knew they're like, they were on the bubble. They might not be a tournament team unless they really got good at the end of the year, but um, as long as that, that version shows up, if the team that's been here for three weeks is the one that shows up, then I think Wade actually has a little more around him too. And, uh, I could see it. They're not going to get physically punked even by Houston, who I think is the most physical team in the country. All right. I like your three answers. I'll give three different ones. Uh, I think the, the obligatory answer here is James Madison. You have to go there because, uh, I know you're high on Wisconsin. I'm not, I know you're not high on Duke, neither am I. I think that draw alone, you have to like admit it's a pretty good draw for a mid-major team. Like no matter who the mid-major team is, right? I think there's a lot of teams that would take a 12 seed in Wisconsin and Duke's pod and feel like, okay, we can out-talent Wisconsin and we can just punk Duke. They're soft. Like that's... The, those teams have massive question marks no matter who they're playing to me. Both teams let lesser opponents hang around during the season a bunch. Wisconsin lost to the worst teams in the Big Ten. Duke let a few teams in their non-conference hang around that they shouldn't. They lost to some of the worst teams in the ACC. So I like that. I think, uh, again, I have James Madison in my Sweet 16, and from there all bets are off if they get to a Sweet 16 and somehow find uh, Houston there. Um I also just realized I don't have James Madison in my Sweet 16. I have Duke, but I think I need to change that because I don't trust Duke the more we talk through this. Uh, my next one, I'm going to go down to the West region, a team I haven't talked too much about. I've kind of glossed over because I'm just fading the team they're playing more. I'm going to go Charleston here. Uh, I okay. Have you seen how much they show Pat Kelsey's son on television? Yeah, but that's why I don't trust them because I think that usually those type of vibes end in like that kid in tears. Yes, but if that happens in the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight, I can live with that because I usually there is the team that has that fan that is like become like the sister Jean story, right? Like, oh my God, look, there's an elderly fan. <sighs> like, and then she goes on a huge run. Like, We've seen coaches' kids before become the story. I just get vibes of like Pat Kelsey and his son are going to be a narrative throughout this NCAA tournament. Um, I also want it known, Charleston's best player offensively is a guy named Rain Smith, who is Australian, who on paper is exactly the type of breakout superstar we fall in love with every NCAA tournament. This guy has shot 273 threes this season. He's making 40% from behind the arc. In his last five games, Carter, can I can I tell you what this man's done from three? Yes, of course. 
Five games ago against Campbell, he went 10 for 15 from three in 26 minutes. Against Hofstra, he went 6 for 11 from three in 27 minutes. Against Monmouth, they were up huge, and he only went 0 for 1 from three. I don't know what happened in that game. Against Towson, he went 3 for 10 from three in 32 minutes. And then against Stony Brook in the conference championship game in 38 minutes, this man shot 15 threes and made six of them. He has shot attempted 15 threes in two of his last five games. And the first game of his NCAA tournament this year is against Alabama. He might shoot 23 threes in the first game of this tournament. And if he's hot, like the whole world's going to fall in love with him. Again, Australian, Rain Smith. Uh, I think there's Cinderella vibes here for sure. Isn't that the name of the dude in the office too? <laughs> Rain Wilson. Oh, okay. Well, I, I thought I was going to end it on a high note there. I also, okay, so follow this for me because now I'm on the narrative March game here. Charleston, Rain Smith shoots 23 threes. They beat Alabama in round one. Pat Kelsey and his kid are kissing on the sidelines. Everyone's happy. Great vibes galore. Our city. Next round, they get St. Mary's. What's interesting about St. Mary's? A lot of foreign guys. A lot of foreign guys, my friend. A ton of foreign guys. We got Lithuanians. We got, uh, is that all we have actually? Don't we have no, Mar- Australian? Dukas. Dukas is Australian. Harry Wessels, Australian. Rain Smith, the Australian who takes 15 threes a game, gets a matchup with the team full of Australians that, as far as I know, didn't want Rain Smith. Like, what a matchup that would be. That'd be fun. Uh, I think there's more of a chance of Aiden Mahaney cooking and looking right at Pel- Pat Kelsey's son saying, I'm adopting him. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to call uh, Aiden Mahaney like Vegemite something and make an Australian <laughs> joke there, but apparently not. All right. Uh, my final Cinderella here. I'm going, it's the same region and it's less Cinderella than the others, but I, uh, I think New Mexico could make a final four run. Um, I love, I love their path. We already talked about how Arizona and Baylor are vulnerable. New Mexico plays a similar style as them. I think this team has an argument. They have the best backcourt in the country. I really do. The three headed guard trio with Jalen house is incredible. And, uh, yeah, I, everybody's on them to beat Clemson. That scares me a little bit, but you get through that. I like them against Baylor or Colgate. Then you're talking like staying power. If New Mexico's in the sweet 16, I don't think they're going to get run out of the gym by anybody in that region. Yeah, that uh, I, th- that guard trio is just so fun and special, and it's it's gonna give a lot of people problems. So I like that pick too. Yeah, hundred percent. Can I right. can I, can I rank your picks really quickly? Sure. You talk me into the Charleston one big time. Congrats to you. That Thank you. I, I'm very very intrigued because I was coming in here with the whole like I I watched Charleston in the past. Like this is. I mean, objectively, like one of his, not like not his best teams that he's had at Charleston. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that they got the Rain Wilson that that intrigues me. I will be diving too deep. I will be diving deeper into that. Um, James Madison is probably my least favorite one, and then you put New Mexico second. Okay, I think that's fair. Okay, I appreciate that. All right, let's uh, let's move on. I want to play a quick game of best bets. We're going to do best futures bets, best March Madness futures bets that you can place before the NCAA tournament gets here. Uh, This is a good time to mention our presenting sponsor of the show throughout March is MyBookie. At MyBookie, we have some very special offers for you. Promo code SLEEPERS, link in the description. You can get a first-time deposit bonus up to $1,000. MyBookie is the best. They got futures. They got player props. They have expert picks. Whatever you're looking for from a sports book, MyBookie has it. They even have bracket contests where you can enter and win a chance uh, up to $25,000 in prizes. Link in the description, promo code SLEEPERS. Get that $1,000 deposit match before the game start this Thursday. All right, Cart. I want you to go through my bookies odds. I want you to give me three futures bets that you think are most valuable, whether it's to win the championship, whether it's to make a sweet 16, to win their region. Give me what you think the best three values on the board are. Hmm. Is it a cop out just to do all three, just future winners? You can do however you'd like. I'm going to, I'm going to switch it up a little bit and try to get a couple things to win here. Okay. Let's see here. 
Oh, uh, all right. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna go with this. My favorite future to win it all. Like this is a win. This is a win it all pick. I wait. I gotta make sure those odds are right. My apologies. Sorry about that. Gotta get my bookie up here. All right, here we go. To make sure that my bracket is respected amongst the masses, I I have to say this pick. I get it. You might lose this money in the very first day. There's very very good chance of that. I can't ignore Kentucky's championship odds. I'm sorry. I'd be remiss if I didn't say it during this episode. They have, I think, the best NBA guard talent on this team. Guards win in March. They probably have the best guards in the country. I know other people might say otherwise, but like Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard, combine that with DJ Wagner, combine that with Antonio Reeves. Like you're not going to get much better guards across the country. And I understand they might lose the first game because they're volatile. They're young. They got a little dickhead in their game. And I understand people are like, yeah, you, they, Houston will lock that up. Houston will have those guys struggling. There's also a world where they run Houston out of there. We just saw this Iowa State team play a little defense and lock and run that and score enough points to run Houston out of the gym. That just happened. I know we want to throw that off as a one off, but that really did just happen. There's a world where this Kentucky team gets to that point with Houston. They run that team out. Then maybe you have a possible like Kentucky Purdue matchup, Kentucky Creighton matchup. I think I, if I'm a Purdue fan, I don't want to play Kentucky. They also Kentucky probably doesn't want to play Purdue, but it goes both ways. Those guards are really good. And then they get to the championship game. You could hedge. Also, you couldn't hedge because Kentucky and you're telling me I'm giving Rob Dillingham in a championship game. Thank you. I'll take that. I like my odds there. That's that's my favorite one. Um, it's good. I don't hate that one. I don't hate that one. I feel like you do hate it a little bit. It's okay. Well, I just I don't think it's gonna happen, but I think the value is good. Okay. And then another value play I would have um out of that same region. I will go to another region. I promise you that. Um, this goes along the lines of coaches getting over the hump, and this also goes against my last pick of Kentucky winning it all, but I still like the value. I like the value of Marquette coming out of their region to make the final four. Um, I understand they got the demons thing. This team and the role players have been playing incredible. I think over this past time, I think Ben Gold's taking a jump. I think Joplin's taking a jump. Oso's one of the best bigs in the country. Cam Jones is on a disrespect tour, by the way, Gregory. I know you love a good disrespect, a good chip on the shoulder. No one voted Cam Jones for all Big East teams in basketball. Cam Jones is a killer. And he wants his revenge to get a healthy Tyler Kolick back into the fold. I think this team has enough to come out of this region. Okay. You're betting on Shock in March. He's still a coach, right? He is still the coach, yes. It scares me. It scares me. I'm sorry. Uh, that's fine. Okay. And then my last, my last one in the region of chaos. Not as fun as the other ones because it's a two seed. I think that Arizona has the best chance to come out of this region. And the, there's a lot of odds out there. I, I believe they're even right now with North Carolina to come out of the region. Um, I think Arizona is the best bang for the buck to come out of that region. Caleb Love is a tournament menace, for better or for worse. But it's for better until he gets to the championship game in the second half. Then he'll hurt you. But yeah. he'll get you there. That's the thing. He's special. And the fact that you can get that value for him to win it and the rest of his Arizona team is really good. We do the whole March readiness thing. They might be more ready than anybody with the talent they have and the guys that come off the bench and the guys they have in the backcourt. Then you have Omar, Omar Balo and Kisha Johnson, the guy, their glue guy. I, I think this team is really primed to make a run and also bounce back from the, you know, the hurt of last year using losing to Princeton. Yeah. It is great value. I'll agree with that. Okay. I like yours. I think you did good with yours. Um, I'm going to talk to you offline because I might be betting some of these with you. <laughs> We're going to see. Uh, I have three that uh, I have one like moderate, like this This could happen, low odds. And then I have a long shot. And then I have a medium range, really good value. Um, my first one is the smallest odds, most likely to happen. But I think it's good value. Plus money. Iowa State to reach the Elite Eight. 
so they would just need to be, I mean, their favorite in every single game on paper, the two seed, right? This was the top rated two seed. This team could have been a one seed. And I get that everyone wants to love Illinois. I've talked at length about how Iowa State is the nightmare matchup for Illinois. They don't want to see a team that drags them into the mud and slows it down. In a hypothetical Illinois-Iowa State matchup, Iowa State's going to be favored, and I think you feel pretty good about your chances there. Let's also acknowledge the very real fact that Illinois could lose early in this tournament. Not necessarily saying Moorhead is likely to beat them, but given Illinois' track record, there is obviously a chance of implosion somewhere along the way. Whether that be to BYU, whether that be to Moorhead, I don't know. If you just remove Illinois from that pod of eight teams, there's nobody in that pod at all that's touching Iowa State. Like, I, Iowa State would destroy BYU, Duquesne, Moorhead, Washington State, Drake. None of them are even going to give them a game. So, to me, it comes down to literally, is Illinois going to make an Elite Eight or not? If you were giving me plus 110 odds that Illinois won't make an Elite Eight, <laughs> I'll take that. Um, I, I think Iowa State is the best team in that pod by a lot, and that's really good value at plus money. Yeah, I like that. So I, and that's based solely off the Iowa State being in that pod. Iowa State's really good. Yeah. Uh, okay, my second one is a little more long shotty. Actually, this is my biggest long shot. I think the best value to make the final four to win their region on the board is a team that is in my final four. I think it's St. Mary's 10 to one. Uh, This West region we've talked about it is wide open. St. Mary's has been the eighth best team in the country since February 1st. They are the second best team in this region in that span. And everybody wants to say, yeah, it's because they're playing nobody. No, they played Gonzaga twice and were very, very good in the championship game. They beat them two out of three and dominated Uh, Like over the course of the season, I thought they were the better team pretty clearly in that matchup. Um, I don't think anybody's playing better in this region. Like Arizona is the one team that grades out metrically better than them. And Arizona, an eye test tells me they're not playing better right now. They just had to bench their best player for 15 minutes in the conference tournament. So (laughs) I'm all the way in on St. Mary's. I think they make the final four at 10 to one odds. That's that's way too much value. It's a must bet. Uh, Me and you are locked in on the Gales. Yeah, I've I've joined. I'm a believer. If it's going to end, you know, we're going to end arms in arms, brother. It scares me how much you and I are like leading the St. Mary's charge. Normally we're doing the opposite. So I don't know if that's good or like, did we get tricked here? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, also Brian Ralph dragged me to the antelope zone last night and I was, I, I fought well. Don't, don't get me wrong. I was fighting for my life. He tried to use some warfare tactics some mental warfare tactics on me. I stayed strong, um, and I still feel good about the Gales, but I don't like what he was doing. Yeah, Ralph is a dangerous man when he gets you on an island. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm excited to watch that preview later today. Okay, my final one. This is my favorite bet of the tournament, and uh, it's creative. Conference to win the NCAA tournament. You can bet this in my bookie. Conference to win. SEC plus 475. The SEC, for my money, has been the strongest conference at the top all season long. In the Big East, you have UConn, and then you got a couple teams people want to believe are good in Creighton and Marquette. In the Big Ten, you got Purdue, and then you got one other team people wants to believe is good in Illinois. In the Big 12, you got Houston, and then you got Baylor and BYU and Kansas, teams people want to believe are good. In the SEC, you have at minimum Tennessee and Kentucky. Tennessee and Kentucky could win a national championship. Then you also have teams other people like, not me, but Auburn, uh, Alabama. You have a lot of high-profile, high-ceiling teams. The fact that this conference is fourth on the list of odds to win the tournament makes very little sense to me. Uh, I think Tennessee could very easily win their region and be in the Final Four. I think Kentucky, while I'm picking Houston to beat them, is almost like a very easy draw to the Elite Eight. And then from there, it's a toss up. Uh, if you, there's a very good chance we could have Kentucky and Tennessee in the final four. Who knows what even happens on the other side of the draw? You have one team guaranteed in the national championship with a plus 475 ticket. I, I love, 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 love that price. Do love that price. Uh, what, what are the, what's that order, by the way? Is it Big East one? Big 12 plus 235, then Big East plus 285, then Big 10 four to one, SEC plus 475. 
I know 285 is not the greatest. Like, I, I love that. I want to go all in on that, but love the Big East odds. And at that point, you might as well just bet UConn, though, to me. I know you are I know you like Creighton, but I, I think the better value would be just bet UConn if you're betting the Big East. True. Because what, you can get UConn plus 360? Like, I think you're banking on that anyway. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. All right. Fun. Fun exercise. Final topic today. Can we, can we bet some of these offline? Yeah, 100%. I'll talk All to right. you. We'll, right. we'll expense it. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, final topic today. We we are gonna expense it for sure. No, we're gonna. I we need a little like expense March budget. We'll I, we'll talk offline. Okay, just a tiny one. All right, medium medium one. Okay, we'll talk large one. Okay, right. fi- final topic. <laughs> Three wishes. Give me if you could rub a bottle and Mark Emmert pops out. What three wishes do you have for this NCAA tournament? You can make anything happen. You could literally wish your team a national championship wish number one. Do whatever you want. What are your three wishes? And you can't uh, wish for more wishes. Okay. Good call. I was going to wish for two more. Um, my first wish is I honestly just Michigan State to make a sweet 16. That's it. I don't I don't want I no, because I don't want AJ Hogard to win a national championship. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. Like okay. I, I can't I cannot deal with the discourse if this team wins a national championship. I can't. Okay. It'll it won't be it won't be joyful enough for me. That's my first wish. My second wish. Hmm. I want Illinois to make a final four. But I want them to match up with Arizona in the final four. I want to see that game. I don't care the outcome. I just want to see that. I want that to be the final four on that side of the bracket. And then my last wish, quite simply, it's broad. I want to witness a 50 ball. Preferably by Rob Dillingham. But I want to see a 50 ball at some point in the tournament from somebody. And I don't even care if it's in a win or a loss. If I want to get super greedy, it'd be a Rob Dillingham 50 ball in the national championship game to cut down the nets. That would be my greatest joy. I think that'd be my three issues to Jeannie Emmerich. That would be fantastic. Okay. Um, I'm really torn because I I have four wishes and I'm trying to prioritize here. Um, Because there's some matchups that I want to force to happen here. And I'm trying to figure out if I need to spend individual wishes on them or if there's a way for me to be creative and combine them. I think I have to just spend the individual wish on the first one. I want... (sighs) You know what? Some of my wishes don't even work together now that I think about it. Because I want Caleb Love versus North Carolina with a Final Four on the line. I want that. But I also want Michigan State in the Sweet 16, and I can't have both of those. So I'm going to have to pick one here. I pick Caleb Love against North Carolina. I want that. Um, that. I think that's the most fun possible matchup we could get in the NCAA tournament is Caleb Love against his former team with a Final Four on the line. Caleb Love versus RJ Davis. Let's see who wins forever. And we already saw Caleb Love against Coach K win the for forever game. So I would be really scared of North Carolina – or, uh, scared of Arizona in that game if I'm North Carolina. Number two, I want uh, I want Illinois and Purdue to make deep runs in this tournament, and I'm gonna let the genie define deep runs. But I want I want at least a second weekend. Letting a genie define a deep run and also throwing in that second weekend at the end is very unlike you. Well, I can't I can't be personally responsible for where these teams lose because I will get blamed. So I want it known. Instead, I want all the credit for getting them a run with my wish, but the genie gets the blame for where they ultimately lose because he has to decide that. Correct. Okay. So are there such things as a female genie? Uh yeah, there is. Okay. I just I felt bad saying he as if we know that our genie is a man. Yeah, I think genies I I Actually, I think in the same, I think in Aladdin, there is a female genie as well. Got it. Okay. 
I'm just checking. My final one, uh, it, I have to do this. I have to. I owe it to him. I want Boo to beat UConn. I want, Boo, I want Boo to go toe-to-toe single-handedly with UConn and do that 50-ball type performance you're talking about. Like, just to just to straight up, Tristan Newton can't effing guard me, and I'm letting him know about it for 40 minutes. And everyone in the country realizes he's the best point guard in America, and he has been for three years, and no one's acknowledged it except for me. I, want, I like it. I want yeah. that moment. Uh, my backup wish would have been a Final Four full of good teams. <laughs> I think we're getting that this year. We don't need to wish for that. We think we're just no, going to. that's go. happening. Okay. All right. Fun episode today. What's your one big thing presented by Baby? Uh, my one big thing is uh, back to the whole gadget thing. For my birthday, uh, well, what part of my birthday gift was like that. You seen that uh, vegetable chopper that like goes right into the container? Yeah. I never had one of those. I always wanted one. I see them on TikTok all the time. I got one. And I made like some pico yesterday to go with my eggs. That's an incredible invention. If anyone doesn't, if you don't have that, grab one. It was it's it's an elite elite tool. Uh, shout them out too. She made some salsa this past weekend, I think, with that same device, and it slapped. Had a little kick to it, a little jalapenos in there. It was okay. good. Stuff. All right. What you got, we? I meant to talk to you about this over the weekend. We got to cut the jalapenos joke. What? Why? It just it's not hitting the way you think it is. I always call jalapenos jalapenos. I've done it I've done it for years now. I I would advise you in your best interest to maybe cut that out. Okay. I'm not going to. Okay. That's okay. I need a Guinness right now. I just needed to make that known. <laughs> uh, my one big thing is that uh last night I had a plate full of ice cream. For dinner that's all i had uh what stop 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 a plate yeah a plate of ice cream that's all you i had put, you put ice cream on a plate well this is a different it's like an ice cream dish that's not just a scoop of ice cream it's uh my my mother makes this dessert dish that is like mint chocolate chip ice cream with like crushed up oreo batter like baked in as almost like a crust and it's like a sheet like you end up you like scoop, you cut out a square of it and you want to like eat it with a fork because you cut it up a certain way. So it's on a plate, not a bowl. Makes sense. Okay. Go on. I had that for dinner. Uh, we were just recording so much shit. I, I didn't eat. And then all of a sudden it was seven and I'm like, oh, and there was no food readily available. So I was like, I'll just eat this ice cream. Uh, one, huge plus points for ice cream for dinner. That's great. Two, Want it known that in the last three days, I've lost six pounds, primarily eating just shit food and just sitting on my ass recording. But we've been recording so much that I can't eat enough and I'm losing weight while eating ice cream. And it's fun. Two things. I wish that would happen to me. And three, or sorry, not three, two things, two things. Good Lord. Get together. Uh, Connie's special. When it comes to baking, like I don't think I've had like, you know, I I I thought that maybe you know, uh, maybe once in a while, like you know, Connie, she forgets about me sometimes. I know I haven't like come over in a minute, but like if you do listen to this, I would love a batch of Scotch Roos. Those are what those called, like those <laughs> the the peanut butter rice krispies with the chocolate on top. Or those Scotch Roos, that what they're called. I don't know. My mother's never made those. <laughs> yeah, she stop, bro. I was. She at, hasn't I made was that's a, no. You're you're confused. You have just the traditional white mom baking goods list right no, now. My mom's never no. made those. We're not doing. Never it. made those. I was literally at your house and I had oh. the, your house in Lansing. Yes, you're talking the Cheerio treats. Those no. are different. Those no, are different. It's not Those the are Cheerios. different. Okay. Yes, they are. She okay. has her go-tos. I know my mother. You think I'm lying about my mother? You're just wrong on this one. You're a little off. It's fine. This is why my mother had you blocked on Twitter for two years. You just don't know her. You claim you know her it and you don't. It was two years. It was like I had mother. to beg her to unblock you, and I, I'm glad she did. But, like, come on. This is deserved. It's earned. You don't. You at, you play the game that you know her, and you don't. That's That hurts. It was Scotch Roos. <laughs> She's never made that. I don't even know what that is. It's, really- it's it's like a peanut butter rice crispy like like rice crispy kind of uh just treat and then I think it's like a layer of melted chocolate over the top you like freeze it or leave it out like let it harden 
and it's like a rice crispy with chocolate on the top and it's peanut butter. It's delicious. It. Sounds incredible. I've never had that. I don't know what it is because my mother has never made it. I, Greg, I was in your parents' house. I know exactly where I was. I was in that, you know, that corner where the, where the baked goods are, if they're available, they're on that Island area in that yes. corner by the door. Yes. Where the garages and everything. Yes. I, Went in there before we did our episode, before we did our college hoops to go episode. We stared at your parents' house before we did that. Yes. And I had myself a scotch roux. She didn't make that. That's never she's never made that. I know for a fact she's never made that. I'm gonna ask her. We'll we'll clip this. We'll send it to her. Good lord. At least I don't pretend I know your mother well. Like you're you try to play the game of like you go way back with my mother. You don't. You don't even know her baked goods. It's insane. I'm trying to give her compliments as if you you were in the trenches with Connie in the kitchen. Come on. Come on. That's the show today. <laughs> Enjoy the madness. We'll be back on Thursday with our final episode of the week uh, before the NCAA tournament. Thanks for watching.